Where does the word sports come from? Sparta. Sparta were the place where you have people where all they cared about is their body, their physique, the materialism, and the anti-Torah. What does it mean to be anti-Torah? Anti-Torah means they cannot live in peace so long as the Torah exists. So these people, these Reshaim, did everything they possibly could to destroy the Jews by enticing them to join sports, to live life, to be careful about their physique, do all types of exercise, they made the Colosseums where they would have, they still have these Colosseums uh, in, in uh, the old ones in Rome and other places around the world in Greece. But then you have giant ones all over the United States. They just call them sports stadiums. These are Colosseums where you have 22 giant overgrown males trying to kill each other over some pig skin or a bunch of guys trying to fight over a little uh, ball. Uh, whatever it is, all of these people, this is all Sparta, this is a continuation of Sparta. Now, the mentality of following sports, being allowed, is one of the tools of Amalek, one of the tools of the Arab world, that you're allowed to follow sports. Why? Because sports, unlike anything else, sports is very addictive. You can't just watch a game that you don't know who's playing. Like, you're not just going to watch some random high school basketball game and everybody else is just an average player or less. You have to watch the NBA, and it's not just the NBA, you have to watch the team that you like. And how are you gonna like them? You have to follow them. You have to follow their players, and who they're trading, and who they're getting as the rookie of the year, and who's the best sister, and who's the best sister, and that there, and all that there, and what kind of sneakers is he wearing, and what kind of this, and what's his salary cap, and he's getting paid too much, and he's getting paid too little, and he signed with Nike, but he's with Adidas. And what ends up happening? You become a fan. What's a fan? Where does fan come from? Fanatic. Fanatic about sports. You know everything about these teams. You're not just watching a 90-minute game. You're investing your life into it. Because in order to like the game, to like the teams, you have to know who's playing and why you like them. You don't just like them because he's six foot six and jumped 40 inches into the air and he runs a 40 and a 3-9. No, you don't care about that. You care about different things. That means you have to invest a lot of time into this. And that is a lot more than the 90 minutes of the actual, or the 60 minutes that the basketball game or the football game or the baseball game is. It's a huge investment. You're constantly watching it. You're constantly looking at it. You're constantly arguing about it. Which means that even when you try to learn, you try to learn, you're thinking Rabbi Akiva, yeah, Rabbi Akiva, uh, Rabbi Akiva, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, Michael this, Michael that, LeBron James. You're not even sure who you're reading about. You start to think maybe Rabbi Akiva and Rava, maybe it's Talmidi, maybe Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the cave, he had a basketball. You start distorting things in your head. You can't be focused when you're a fan. Now, are you allowed to play sports? is a different question. Playing sports in order to exercise is allowed. You're allowed to play a little bit of basketball as long as it's not on Shabbat because for anyone that's an adult, the ball is considered mukte. And it's also something that you do during the mechol, during the weekday. It's not an action that you would do on Shabbat. But if it's during the week, you want to exercise via playing basketball, via exercising, running or something like that, whatever you want to do, that's allowed. That's allowed to exercise. But to become a fanatic, to become one of the people that watches the games on a regular basis, absolutely forbidden. Not only as a bitul Torah, but also as could be even considered Abu Dazra to some extent. Why Abu Dazra? When you become a fan, you simply start obsessing over these people. Obsessing over the sport, fighting over it, crying over it. What? You're 25 years old, you idiot. You're crying over a bunch of people that make $50 million a year because they lost? You idiot. Do you understand what they're going to do to you in Shamaim for crying over this, but not crying over the Bet Migdash? You didn't cry this much when your own father died, but you're crying over the basketball game, a football game, and not only that, you're blaming Hashem. Why is Hashem doing this to me? Like he has to change the world so you can continue going again. Him. The mented mentality that we have sometimes really boggles my mind. It's Mama's Chesed Elokim that was still alive. You see grown men crying over their football team, their basketball team, or God forbid if they're from Europe or they're in that area of the world, soccer, Hashem Yishmol Vietzil. There's been murders over that game. Literally, they kill people. You think this is what Kadosh Baruch Hu says? Kedoshim to you, ki kedoshani, your holy nation. You think he was referring to those people? No, he was talking to us that are learning Torah, that are fanatic about Torah. You want to use exercise, use it for exercise, no problem. 
to spend any time watching these sports absolutely forbidden. In fact, type Lego and Rav Kanievsky's father says television, you watch television, news, games, all that stuff. In his days, it was much better TV than today. Even in his day, says watching regular news t- networks, right? Regular TV. Avodah Zarah Mamash. He called watching television. You're watching shows. You watch Netflix. You watch movies. Regular base. This is your life. You watch sports. Avodah Zarah Mamash. Idol worshiper. Yeah, but he goes to show, Rabbi. Okay, so there's a lot of people that idol worshiper goes to. So a person needs to understand. In order to become the Jew that he's supposed to become, in order for her to become the Jew that they're supposed to become, the most important thing is to not allow the Tum'ah to enter your mind. Because if you allow the Tum'ah to enter your mind and enter your heart, it doesn't matter how many tzvot you do, there's always going to be filth on them. You can get the best piece of meat in the world, but if there's filth on it, no one's going to eat it. Doesn't matter what the cow was, it could be a red cow from the Bet HaMikdash. There's filth on it, no one's going to eat it. Your neshama cannot get to its full potential if it has filth on it. And if you allow this filth to constantly hit your system every day, for an hour, two hours, three hours every day, how are you expecting to arrive to Allah? How? How exactly do you expect to learn Torah and understand anything?